This is the reason why the Lord instructed me to teach you in these things I'm teaching you during this season. Now, what we are, live, we are, we are deliberating on from last Sunday till now is quite very simple. Someone asked me, what is the topic? It is living a, a purpose-driven life. Living a purpose-driven life. You must not live a day of your life without a purpose. Now, I told you last Sunday, I hope you all have done it. Nevertheless, if you all have not done it, you will do it when you leave this place. I said to you to write down for me your life in 2021. January to June have passed. When you came to January, what did you set out to achieve in your life? I said, write it for me. I said, you should look at what your life costed you. The cost of your life. That is your bills, your expenses, the income that came into your life each month till now. Similarly with your company. Look at what you have today. Are you in profit or are you in a loss? Your first six months of the year. Then look at what you did to achieve those things that you have achieved as you said. And what you did that a blunder you may commit that made, you not, that made it unable for you to achieve some. And look at some that you have, you, are, you have inability. You could not achieve them because of an inability. There's something you, have, you need. If you, if you had gotten that, you would have been able to fulfill this. Write those things down for me. And I told you that you would bring them to me. You know why I'm telling you this? God gave me an instruction concerning you. The Lord had determined good for you. If you are under this roof, there is no such a thing that an enemy is after me. When you entered here, he ran back. Because when they tell him that you belong to the church where Apostle William preside, woe betide the enemy if he follow you here. He can't even follow you. You can't enter here with you. He cannot. Look, I told you that my wife had a fall. I called Dr. Dr. John Joe because he's the one who I've been taking care of her. We have many doctors in the church, you know, who are doctors in various areas of, of expertise. He's a general practitioner, and he had been handling mom's case. I didn't pay him. If I call any one of you doctors here because something happened, I won't pay you. You will be happy to do it. And the instruction you will give me, I can't trust any other doctor outside CFT more than you. If any doctor has asked if they told me something different, I will tell him that you lied. Either you lied or you don't know what you are doing. Okay? It's like a father told the child something, and that child will tell anybody, my father said. You know? Those of you who are engineers, I need engineering knowledge, I call you. Look at these speakers here. One of you fixed these speakers here, a member of CFT Church. The moment I, I heard that he has the skill, called him. This is what I want to do. We employed him and paid him for that, the church. Because I would not allow the church not to pay for service of people like that. But for you, I use you. If you need law issue, I will direct you to those who are qualified in that area of law in this house. Okay? Banking, I will direct you to those who are in banking. If you are administration, I direct you to those who are in administration. If you want to do MBA, I direct you to those who have done MBA, so many of them. Anything that you need, I channel you to who in this house can help you. Correct? Am I saying the truth? I can't hear your voice above the roof. You have been listening to me. Talk to me. I don't have many people upstairs here. Now listen to me. Therefore, you know what I'm telling you? Believe in the prophet. You will prosper too. If I believe in you, and your calling, bless me. God told me to tell you to write the report of your life, and he will give me instruction over it. Don't take it easy. You have not heard me say that before. Or, you know, I've not heard. Remember I said that anyway. So if you have been struggling before, 
the days of your struggle is over. But you have to believe and do what I said. When I will mingle my calling with your needs, something happened in heaven. Moses said to them, let me go out before the Lord. I will stretch my hand before the Lord and God will answer you in this place. Use the gift in the house. When I speak into your need, you watch out and see. But you must do what God said. Don't take it lightly. God will not supply your want. He will supply your need. I want you to stand before God justified because you have complied with what God said. Need, need. Do you know your need? Yes, yes. From January to June, I know my need. From, June, from July to December, these are my needs. And let's see what will happen. It's already happening among you. I will together now. So do what I tell you. I extend your time to do it. You are supposed to finish it before today. Say amen. I extend it to next Saturday. So that when you see me next Sunday, you have done it. We agree? Let me give you how to. One hour Monday, one hour Tuesday, one hour Wednesday, one hour Thursday, one hour Friday, five hours. If you are the slowest reader like me, you have finished it. And interestingly, your account system now is computer. Just go to the computer, send it to Excel sheet, and it will give you to you an Excel sheet. If your bank don't have that facility, HSBC have it, that's why I'm saying it. If your bank don't have facility of such, print them out. Income, spending, income, it's all in your account. You don't need to be cracking your brain looking for invoice. I don't want you to look for invoice, okay? Look at what came into your account, what you spent. And if you're a person who also turns cash around and you spend cash, sit down, account for it. You cannot continue to live a life without accountability. That is what shunts success. Not demons. All right. Running or living a purpose-driven life. God does not do anything without purpose. Write that down. God does not do anything without purpose. I gave you six elements yesterday, uh, last Sunday, that are drivers of purpose. Last Sunday, what I gave you is called drivers of purpose. And the common of this subtitle, living a purpose-driven life or living a life of purpose. God does nothing without a purpose. There is nothing God would do without a purpose. Look at the book of Isaiah 45, verse 18. We're going to read it together. Why did God tell us that he is God after we have known that he is God? Brethren, those who are not Christians, they know that the one who created heavens is God. Now God is talking to you, his children. He says, this is what the Lord says. He who created the heaven, he is God. Do you know why God said things like that in the Bible? God wanted you to listen with your heart. Because a dictum is, a, is about to be birthed. A principle that you must not but apply to your life. So listen attentively to what heaven is saying. God says, for this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. Now, let's read together the next line. He who fashioned. Stop, please. Don't go, don't go, don't go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's read that again. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. Stop. So that tells you what? Purpose for God creating the earth. God has a purpose for creating the earth. Youths, listen to me. 
if you are not married, don't just jump into marriage. Okay? Don't just befriend a girl if you are a man, a woman. Or if you are a woman, a man. Don't just go out with them because they look attractive. You must have a purpose before you marry. You guys here, you are already married. The younger one will join them later. Listen to me. A marriage without a purpose is short-lived. It's a matter of time. Don't jump into relationship without, don't say that someone said, God said. What do you say? No prophet will live with you in marriage. Open your eyes well. Don't be in a haste and in a rush that my mates are marrying and so what? Wait for your time. Don't go into a career without a purpose. I will ask you, the business you are doing, what is your purpose for it? You just jump into business because some people are doing the same business? That's the reason why some prosper in the business and others are always struggling and wasting their money, wasting their life and asset. You must not do anything without a purpose. I will help you understand with God. When you do anything in purpose, when you go through storms, your purpose will sail you through. Are you with me now? The Bible says here, God created the earth. He founded it. He created it not to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He formed it to be inhabited. God formed the earth to be inhabited. Let's go to Genesis then. Chapter 1, verse 1. Every one of you know that. In the beginning, that is the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning, God did what? Created what? The heavens and what? I want to hear you from the back there speaking to me. God created the heavens and the earth. But I just read to you here now in that Isaiah 45 that God did not create the heavens and the earth. Yes. He did not create it to be empty. And he formed it to be inhabited. But go back to just Genesis. So it means that when God created the heavens and the earth, in the head of God are all the inhabitants of the earth that are yet to be formed. In the brain of God, according to purpose, is all the contents, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all the elements that form the earth. All the minerals under the ground, the seas, the ocean, the, the, the blue, the green oceans as they are, colored in various colors. Plants of various kinds, birds and all animals. Everything, seasons and regions, nations, tribes, kindred is all in his head because God had a purpose to make sure that the earth he created will be inhabited and it shall not be empty. However, in verse 2, it says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Let me tell you, of course, this darkness, we have had, you know, a lot of inference from the church. Uh, you know, many ministers to preach it that, you know, the devil did something. Some people att attributed that to ice age. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what is written. And where the Bible did not go, we don't want to go there. I don't want to know why that happened. I don't want to know that because it's useless to me. Anything the Bible did not read, write, is not useful for you. If you have it in your head, just keep it away. Here, the Bible says now, whatever happened before now is not in the Bible. It says the earth was formless. However, Isaiah said when God was going to create the heavens and the earth, he has a purpose that is pregnant of an intention to create a place that will not be empty and a place that will be inhabited. However, what you are seeing here now is contrary 
to God's intention. So when things go wrong for you and things are not working according to your plan, according to your intention, the only anchor of your soul is purpose. Excuse me. How many of you are married before? Raise your hand up before me. If you are married, why did I say before? I removed that before. If you are married. <laughs> because I could be quoted. If you are married, raise your hand. Okay, put your hands down. Anybody who have a perfect marriage among you, raise your hand. No, you have never... You have never disagreed with your wife or your husband. No, you never had different opinion to the opinion of your wife or husband. I think we shouldn't. But let me tell you, that is what makes the marriage. Two people with divergent opinions sometimes, okay, so that what will now come together in dialogue will be a better opinion than both. There is no perfect marriage. You know, I told them in New Cross, some people, I went, to, I saw them in the internet. They wrote up manners of things about Pope, this current Pope. And they said that he is the Antichrist. The false prophet, they said. Before the Antichrist. Don't follow those liars. The Pope just did a publication. I will send it to all of you. And the spirit of Satan cannot write such. If he does not have the spirit of God, he cannot write those things that he wrote. I will send it to you about marriage and about love for one another. None of those who listen to me should listen, listen or follow philosophies that have its root in the intellect of men. Apostle does not. If I want intellectual reasoning, I will go to the law council and we will argue to the to the beats. But when it comes to the Bible, I want to read what is written and then stop where it is written so that I can experience what is written. That's why you have many talkers in the church with no manifestation. Ordinary angel they can't see. Never have they seen. But talk about a lot of, I think this means this. I thought this is what that is. I think, stop thinking for the Bible. Let the Bible think for himself. Don't think for God. Listen to me. This scripture tells you and I, you see, sometimes things go bad for Christians. Sometimes hope becomes hopeless for those who follow God. Sometimes you are in a situation that you feel that the day will never break. Sometimes you come to a brick wall that you feel that there is no way out of this. How many times have seen things like that happen to you, but you see, you are still alive and those things have passed away. That is your God for you. Purpose will drive you through. Purpose will drive you through. The Bible says now, the earth was formless and empty, and God did not create the earth to be empty. What drove God? The Bible says, darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was still moving. God was not fed up because his spirit was still moving. Why? In his heart is his purpose. In his heart, in his purpose, is his purpose. Why do students go to school and they suffer when studying, they pay the price, they fail, and they go for it again? And the student who failed and went for it again, other students maybe just do first degree and leave. The one who failed and failed very well and did it again, in a short time has gone to PhD in the same course and now he's now a master of the course. Purpose. Purpose. If you look at the scripture, therefore, it says the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So don't let any challenge dampen your spirit don't let any challenge frustrate you. Frustrate your challenges with your purpose. Stand by your purpose in the midst of all challenges. Don't be moved. Don't waver. If you can stand on your purpose, you have an expected end. And now, 
What happened there? To a man of purpose, you will see. Learn from God. And God said, let there be light. God wasn't hindered. His plan was not hindered by what he saw because of purpose. It's purpose driven. A man of purpose, this is the way you think. Why did God say? God had a purpose to create a world that would be inhabited, but the world was chaotic. Really, the other scripture says that there was chaos over the earth. And when God came, he did not just call Adam to be first. No. He said, let there be light. Why? Order. Order. That is not a statement of a person under pressure. It's a statement of a person who is calm. What makes you calm and you are not under pressure when you are being confronted with challenges that, 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 that seeks to stifle your, your, your intention is purpose. If you are on a purpose, you cannot be moved. Let there be light that is order. And there was light. And the next verse says, God saw that the light was good. You don't rush anything if you are driven by purpose. He spoke, light be, then he observed. Every step you take in life, if you're a man of purpose, you will look behind you to check whether this step you have taken is relevant to the previous step you were. If you don't do that, what happened to you? You can take, this is where you're going, straightforward. You can take a step here, another step to the right, another step to the right, another step to the right. This is where you're going. You can walk tangentially to your course of life because you are not looking back to observe whether what you did yesterday is relevant to what you are doing today. The impact of what you do today to what you have built yesterday, an evaluation of what is going to be the future in the cumulative effect of the steps you have taken and the one you have taken now in reference to what you are, where you're going. Purpose will drive you through. Don't just keep going. Stop. God said, let there be light. He stopped and he saw <laughs> that the light was good. Then he said, and separated the light from darkness. All right? He separated the light from darkness. That is order. Order is step one, step two, step three, step four. But when you have step one and you want to jump to step four, that is disorder. No wonder you crash. God saw. And then he separated darkness from light. Then the next thing what God did, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Definition. Define every step of your life and make sure that your definition is according to the functioning. Definition. When you marry a woman you want to marry, don't you define her? You do. Because she was, maybe she's in the church. And I'm targeting this place now. <laughs> Hallelujah. The latest one in town who married among the three of you. Uh -huh. She was a sister to you before, isn't it? Yes? And when you came to me to tell me that you, you, you have met her, as if you have never met her before, you met her before, isn't it? Her definition was a sister in the church for years until the definition changed before she could be your wife. You must define every step of your life. Definition helps functioning. Really, definition will, will, will delegate power to who what you define. And to you who define, there are obligations resting upon your shoulders. 
And when your power delegated to the person or to the situation you define. Between the years of 1984 and 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven on various occasions where he was shown global events that would lead up to the year of 2015. And in 1999, the Apostle was powerfully shown the coming calendar for the world. I want you to understand that the first war was in heaven, the first victory was in heaven, and it takes the man of heaven to win the earthly battle. In December 2009, God instructed Apostle Alfred Williams to go into all the world and let them know that I am coming. Beloved, with this powerful instruction behind us, it is now time for us to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Now is the time for the final preparation of the Bride of Christ. A final trumpet call to righteousness in this time that is running out before the rapture of the church. Join us on this dynamic campaign to reach every house in Britain. They need to hear the call. Who will tell them if we do not? This is the prophesied time of harvest. It is now time for us to win every house for Jesus. For more information, call 020 7635 0447 or visit cftchurches.org. The time has come to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon.